23, can send it to 33 with one more here. I think maybe he feels that Leilani Lanes may owe him one here. And Back he, in 1978, he and Jay Robinson led the doubles here and lost on the television show to Mike Berlin and Jimmy Certain. And so I have a feeling at this point he would love to come back, win this title, but I think he's a little too pumped up, sat down, got himself a breath of fresh air there. Well, yeah, what's happening is the adrenaline is pumping so hard right now that his heartbeat is going so fast that he has to mentally get control of himself and try and just say, hey, calm down. You can't get too excited yet. You've got to strike again here. Could make it a four-bagger here in the seventh. He leads by 23. Threw it well. Ooh, doesn't carry the light hit. The ball just wouldn't quite finish, but that gives Mark McDowell life here. If McDowell can strike a couple of times, and McDowell's studying the rack. And personally, if I was willing, I wouldn't shoot the rack. I'm sitting right behind it, and I would re-rack if I were Mark McDowell. Of course, I don't throw his ball either, so. Maybe we'll get a chance to look at the rack on 28 as Dale Eagle prepares to shoot the cross alley spare at the seven pin that wiggled for a moment, but just would not fall. So Eagle spares up, has 139 now through six with a spare up in the seventh. And why, Mike Durbin, would you not shoot a 20 at the rack? Well, I'm sitting at a slightly different angle than we see there on the screen. And I, the five pin just looks a freckle off spot to the left of me. And I get paranoid on things like that. And I say, nope, I'm going to, you know, if I have three re-racks re coming, I'll take it. I'll take one right there. It's a big shot here. have not seen a re-rack here tonight, have we? I don't think so. I don't think so. Either. Maybe that's indicative of things to come. The younger players don't re-rack as much. Hey, the way they strike, they don't have to. McDowell in a must-strike situation. Let's it fly. And knocks that tip in out of there. Here he comes. A very gutsy performer, an outstanding athlete. As a matter of fact, his freshman year walked on as a kicker and made the University of Wisconsin's football team. And uh, in practice, kicked a couple of 55-yard field goals. In a game, kicked a 48-yarder and still decided that uh, bowling was his game and transferred to West Texas State. And you know that those field goal kickers have uh, just ice running through their veins. Well, he must have been a soccer-style kicker, you think? I would think he probably was. Got tremendous leg action, though. Very strong player. Not very tall, but uh, very solidly built. Down by 12, can cut it to two with one more. This the lane's been giving him trouble. Zips it up. Ooh, pretty shot. And a little reaction from McDowell here. He's talking to lane 27. He's saying, hey, that's the best shot I've thrown all night long and don't dare Watch this stand ball. up. Watch this ball knock out that 10 pin. Six pin goes to the wall, doesn't even hesitate. And McDowell has a fist. Look at his reaction here. And I think this is a little bit for the lane and a little bit for Eagle, because Eagle's been doing this. So there's a little psych job going on. A lot riding on this one tonight. $18,000 to the winner and a trip to Akron, Ohio. Firestone Tournament of Champions. Dale Eagle will try and answer back, and he knows. Oh, my, we've got a gunfight here. And at Firestone, you can win 50000 so there's a lot riding here. Two pins with two frames to go. Well, you would know about the Firestone. You won it three times. Well, I was blessed there. That's, if we see the scoreboard there. McDowell 127 in the sixth with a double working eagle 159 in the seventh with a strike. If both players would go all the way, if my addition is right here, eagle would win 249 to 247. Mm, mm, mm. I don't know about you, Mike, but I'm starting to get a little nervous. Ninth frame. It's about time to start getting nervous. Eagle's a little nervous, too. Yep, steps back off the approach. He did that Gets in the seventh frame and left the seven pin. It's a little air on the right hand, just to make sure that the grip is proper. You don't want to lose a shot right at this point with the title on the line. Yeah. Oh, he had the 410 standing for a second, and he aimed that shot. He knew it. Yeah, immediately, that, when that ball left his hand, he was praying for maybe just the 4 pin, and he got a break there. You see it go high here, and the 410 is standing for a second. And what I want to point out here is you see what pressure does. We saw Dale Eagle perform in the 10th frame under enormous pressure last night and come through in flying colors. And the pressure is so great right then that he was unable to respond to it like he wanted to. That's when you talk about maybe just squeezing it just a little bit, trying to hang on to that ball to make sure that you make the perfect shot and you don't do what's natural. It's just hard under that kind of intense pressure. 
Let's see how the rookie, 24 years old, Mark McDowell here is, responds to the same kind of pressure. And this is the first time he has ever bowled for a PBA title. To take the lead in the ninth frame. He is pumping that ball away a little bit. Come on, come on. Here it comes. The 10 pin. So we have three pin difference if he makes the 10 pin going into the 10th frame. Well, he threw it well. It just didn't knock out that weak 10. Came in behind the pocket somewhat. Big spare here. He cannot afford any mistakes. And he knows it. Mark McDowell, one of the leading candidates to claim PBA Rookie of the Year honors. Made three straight top 24 finals this past winter. He's already won better than $19,000 this year. Straight, see how he straightens that ball out. Great tip for our younger players. If they're throwing that big hook, straighten it out at those spares. He's down by three, 179 to 176. Both players working on spares. It's the bowler that can perform in the 10th frame that's going to win. And if they both do, then Eagle will win, but we'll see. It always seems to come down to the 10th frame here on the tour, Mike. And when you live with that, it's no different than anything else. They're used to that kind of pressure. <laughs> I never did get used to it, I'll tell you. Well, you did all right. You won 14 times. You had to do something right along the way. Yeah, but I didn't win too many of them in the 10th frame, I'll tell you. Oh, he really gave that one away. And left the 10 pin again, and it's in Eagle's hands. He just couldn't get that one off his hand, but it came back. He got it to the pocket. Look to me, Mike, as if Mark made two very good shots in the ninth and the tenth and just uh, was a bit unlucky not to carry a strike. Well, he could have struck on both of them. It was in the pocket. He's got to make this spare to keep him any chance that he has of winning. And he does. Have to be impressed with McDowell's performance, really, Mike. He has just been solid since the fifth frame. Ended up with a four-bagger, strikes five, six, seven, and eight, and then a couple of tens in the ninth and the tenth, or he really could have been in the driver's seat. And that solid nine he left back in the third frame. Well, right now, he'd be in the lead if he carried that. Count is still important. If he strikes on the fill ball, it's 215. Just more relaxed on that one. Gets himself a little clap on his own and says, well, it was the first time I've ever pulled for a PBA title, and uh, I think I represented myself pretty well. And Eagle throwing the most important ball he's thrown in the last two years right now. And I think he knows it. It's not over yet. I mean, even though it is, but it isn't. He's, he's only got 209 right now until he throws another ball. Has to stay behind the foul line as he went over and gave Mark McDowell a hug. Did you see the graphic there? He needs seven pins to win his third PBA title. $18,000 and a trip back to the Firestone Tournament of Champions. That'll do it right there. All week long, he has been Mr. Clutch in the 10th frame, and he responds one more time. Dale Eagle climbing the ladder as his wife is, oh, I guess as excited as she's ever been in her life, climbs the ladder all the way to the title match and captures the $120,000 Ebonite Firebolt Open.